Good morning. Uh, we're going to talk about implementation guide tooling. We have three different tools. We have roughly 40 minutes. We're going to try to keep it to 10 minutes each so that there's some time for questions. And then, of course, there will be more time for questions because we're going to do a hands-on session where you get an opportunity to play with all of this stuff. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the general uh, inputs and outputs of the IG publication process. That's common to all of the tools, whatever it is we do. Uh, then I'm going to talk specifically to HL7's IG publisher. Uh, Sean's going to talk about Trifolia and Arden's then going to talk about Simplifier. And we'll do a quick who the heck we are uh, in case anybody cares. Uh, and then we'll get into the content. So my name is Lloyd McKenzie. I've been doing HL7 for way too long. I've uh, done pretty much every standard HL7 has developed um, and been involved with FHIR since before it was called FHIR. I co-chair of various things um, and one of my uh, volunteer activities is I help to maintain uh, HL7's IG publisher and I produce lots of implementation guides uh, both within HL7 for the standards process uh, as well as for different uh, companies. Uh, hello, my name is Sean McElvena. I'm a senior software architect for Lantana Consulting Group. I am the lead engineer uh, for some of our internal products that we maintain, uh, such as Trifolio Workbench and Trifolio on Fire. Spent uh, roughly 10 years working with HL Standards, uh, co-authoring implementation guides such as uh, Consolidated CDA, and uh, am now currently a co-chair for Structured Documents. Cool. Can you go to the next slide? Well, uh, I'm Ardon Tonstra, and I'm uh, part of the Fire Lead team. Uh, I'm mostly a Fire consultant, where I uh, am specialized in creating Fire profiles, and I've done a couple of uh, implementation guides myself. Um, and I also uh, work at the support of our uh, Fire Lead tools. Um, before I give the word back to Lloyd, I do have a question uh, to the audience: Like, how many of you have ever written an implementation guide before? Can I see some hands? Any implementation guide, so not only Fire, but like V2, so I see a couple of hands. And who's about to uh, write an implementation guide in the future or thinks he will do that? Good. Well, a little bit more. Oh, good. good to know the audience a bit. So, Lloyd? Fire uh, likes to eat its own dog food, so we use resources to define uh, Fire itself. And of course, a key part of FHIR is defining implementation guides that say all of these uh, resources that we've created are pretty generic and pretty loose. You can send a patient that doesn't support name or address or phone number or much of anything else. And of course, you need to tighten that down once you figure out whether you're talking about people or fish and whether you're talking about uh, uh, patients or research subjects or various other things, and implementation guides is the mechanism that we use to do that. The IG publication process is how we take those resources that define profiles and lists of codes and examples and all of the other things that are of interest to people who want to implement your particular use case and turn them into something that is pretty and friendly to read. Because while we could, uh, as a skill testing exercise, just give our implementers a set of JSON files and say, here you go, go implement, most of uh, the implementers in the world wouldn't be terribly thrilled with that, and they would much prefer web-based documentation that they can click on links and looks kind of pretty, et cetera. Um, we start right now uh, with a configuration file, but we're moving away from using that configuration file to only using the implementation guide resource. And then we take a bunch of other conformance resources. We take some standalone web pages where you get to talk about things like what are your security rules and what are all of your awesome use cases and why people should try to implement this and what is your thank you list of all of the people who showed up at conference calls for too many months uh, coming up with what your implementation guide should be. All of that goes into text files. And you cr turn the crank. Uh, either on the IG publisher or on Trifolia or a simplifier, and you get spit out, uh, generally speaking, web pages, although in some cases you might want to produce a PDF or something else. Most implementers would rather you didn't produce a PDF, but some regulatory processes might require that. And you have your published implementation guide. 
there are a lot of conformance resources, and we seem to keep inventing more of them. Some of those have tools behind them that you can actually have a nice user interface to author. Um, and each of those are hyperlinks that, of course, you can't click on on the screen, but when we distribute the slides, you can, so you can go figure out where to find Forge and Trifolia and the HL7 toolkit, etc. And so we do have user interfaces for some of these. Uh, some of the user interfaces are pretty robust. Some of them are not so much. Um, some of them are actually slated for retirement. We've been saying that about Excel for authoring profiles for at least three years now. Graham really wants us to get rid of it, but we keep holding on to it because some of the other tools don't necessarily do everything that we might like. There are some uh, conformance resources that we don't yet have uh, authoring tools for. Uh, hopefully we will have them soon-ish. Uh, and of course, uh, there are absolutely people who don't use authoring tools at all, but just go into their favorite XML editor or JSON editor and whip up a profile or a value set or whatever it is that they need. Uh, and that's certainly still a viable process as well. In terms of HL7's IG publisher, uh, it's open source, uh, written in Java. It actually shares a fair bit of the same code base as the tool set that we use to publish Fire itself. So uh, the same way that we render uh, resources, we try to use that me same mechanism to render profiles. Uh, you can certainly uh, submit uh, pull requests against uh, our GitHub repository if there are enhancements that you would like to see. Uh, it is driven, uh, right now it is still driven by a JSON configuration file. We're trying to transition that to be having everything driven by the implementation guide, but we're not quite there yet. And the key thing that the implementation guide publication process does is it produces a bunch of fragments uh, that are useful uh, in creating web pages that show what your implementation guide does. Uh, so that might be a little snapshot view that shows what are all the data elements in your profile, or a differential view, or a data dictionary view, or a list of all of your constraints, or a list of all your value sets. Uh, various processes that you run against the underlying artifacts to produce a nice little table, or graph, or something. Uh, that is helpful for whoever is trying to read your implementation guide. And then we take those fragments and a combination of templates uh, and a static web creation tool called Jekyll and spit out uh, your website. Uh, the IG publisher does support continuous publication, so you can actually edit your artifacts and about five seconds later your website is updated uh, so you can see what you've changed. Uh, it does validate uh, that everything that you've authored is in fact legal and that you're not referencing things that don't exist or violating uh, rules based on your profiles. So you can't say something that FHIR says is mandatory and suddenly make that not permitted, for example. And then when everything is done and it's checked all your hyperlinks, it packages everything up. Uh, into a zip package and to, into NPM packages for publication. If you want to find the IG publisher, uh, go to the homepage of the Fire Spec, click on the downloads link. From there, uh, you'll get a whole long list of downloads, and if you scroll down a little ways, you'll get to implementation tools, and within that, uh, is both the actual jar for the IG publisher as well as documentation on how to make it work. Generally speaking, we don't expect most people to read that documentation and have any clue what to do. The typical pattern is go find an implementation guide that looks kind of what you like on GitHub, yank out their source uh, and replace it with yours uh, and ask questions on chat.fire.org uh, and make that happen. There is a session uh, later this afternoon on customizing the IG publisher where we'll talk more detail about how to change your templates uh, and make the look and feel a little bit different and show you just how wild and crazy you can go in doing that. I'm going to give you a super quick tour of how the IG publisher works because Arden's going to start jumping up and down at me any second now. Uh, but 
just give you a sense of what that process looks like. Uh, so this is an implementation guide, and you can't see it yet, but you can see it now. Um, or maybe you can't because it's a really big room and that's a small font and I have not figured out how uh, in uh, Windows Explorer to zoom. If anybody can tell me that, I'll be really happy. Uh, if you go into um, the structured data capture uh, implementation guide on GitHub, uh, the key directory is a source directory and you dump your resources. Uh, either XML or JSON or sometimes spreadsheet form into that folder. You dump all your terminology into a different folder. You dump your examples into yet another folder. And you create an implementation guide in XML that references all of those things. And you go to the root directory and you say, I want to generate this thing. And it kicks off a bunch of XSLT uh, to move stuff around and rename things uh, and then launches the IG publisher which validates a whole bunch of stuff and in about two minutes it'll come back and say yeah done uh, here's how many errors there are you should go fix those and I probably will at some point and that's really all there is to running the IG publisher uh, is stick your resources into the appropriate files as either uh, profiles or examples uh, or terminology and wind the crank and see what errors you get back. And coming out of that uh, in this output folder uh, in another minute or so will be uh, the actual website. Of course, there's nothing there yet. And I should probably let Arden go before um, it finishes jenning, so. Or Sean's gonna come first, okay. There you go. All right, thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna talk for a few minutes about Trifolion on Fire. Uh, it is developed and maintained by Lantana Consulting Group. Uh, it's uh, a web-based um, development, a web-based tool for developing and publishing profiles. Um, you can uh, work with both work with resources both on Trifolion Fire's um, repository or directly off of your computer, and it can act as a, a registry so that you can kind of find other what uh, what other implementation guides people are working on that you have access to. Um, the code for Trifolion Fire is publicly available uh, on GitHub as a repository. You can install it in your own environment, or you can. Um, uh, make pull requests similar to the IG publisher and ask for some feature enhancements. Um, so uh, Trifoli on Fire really was uh, kind of intended to make it as simple for uh, implementation guide authors to develop their implementation guides as possible. I found that when creating implementation guides I had to jump back and forth between a lot of different tools, Oxygen XML, Forge, Simplifier, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we wanted to make it as, as, as easy for the end user to uh, create an implementation guide as possible, kind of letting them focus on the content rather than what tool they need to be working in. Uh, Trifolia on Fire does support multiple versions of uh, the Fire specification, including STU3 and R4. Uh, it has uh, an integrated uh, value set authoring and uh, 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 tool, as well as uh, is, has integration with the VSAC or Value Set Authority Center so that you can import value sets directly into Trifolia on Fire. Um, the end result after editing uh, uh, the artifacts, your implementation guide, the structure definitions and uh, or profiles and value sets, uh, you can create a, a, a Fire IG publisher package. Uh, as Lloyd pointed out, you know, there, that, that was, it basically gives you that folder that has all of the resources that you need all uh, uh, put together in the, in the right structure with the IG JSON file uh, um, and you know, all in the correct folders uh, so that you can pass that off to the Fire IG publisher and have, have that easily executed. Uh, Trifolion Fire also has uh, some integration with the Fire IG publisher so that you don't have to do that on your local machine. There's a publish process in Trifolion Fire where you can just hit publish and uh, everything happens for you. And you, you get to see the end result uh, as soon as it's done running the Fire IG publisher for you. 
Um, it does have uh, uh, its own kind of custom version of a Fire uh, API that uh, allows you to interact directly with the Fire server if that's what, it, uh, you, what you want to do as more of an advanced user. Um, and there are, in the UI, there's uh, support for uh, editing uh, seven core resource types directly in the UI with kind of an easy, easy navigation and fields that you can fill in and uh, validation that is performed on, uh, on basically all the artifacts that are related to implementation guide authoring or to an, to an implementation guide. Uh, let's see here, I already mentioned that it supports uh, Fire versions STU3 and R4. Uh, it's kind of uh, powered by, a fire, uh, by uh, one or more Fire servers, so there is actually no database behind Trifoli on Fire. Uh, it's just an arbitrary Fire server that can be lit up um, and, and uses uh, all of the core features of a Fire server that are available by the Fire specification. Um, the UI kind of adapts depending on what version of the Fire server that you're using. If you're using an STU3 uh, 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 Fire server, then it will have a different UI that shows STU3 related fields. And if you're using an R4 server, that UI will change to show those, uh, the, how those fields have changed. Uh, the overall workflow or process for developing an implementation guide in Trifoli on Fire is uh, detailed uh, fairly well in help documentation. But the general overview of what's involved is that you, you start out with creating an implementation guide. You define narrative guidance for those pages, uh, as pages within the implementation guide. Uh, you create structure definitions or, or profiles that define, that uh, kind of define what the constraints are. Uh, you add those profiles to the implementation guide. And then you hit the publish button and it automatically runs the IG publisher for you. Um, at the end, you're given, uh, you're shown the HTML pages as well as some QA information like Lloyd pointed out on what, what issues there are with the implementation guide, any constraint problems that there are. And then uh, you can optionally, once you're satisfied with the, with the published results, you can export those to GitHub so that you can in integrate them with the continuous, uh, continuous build. Uh, here, how, how are we doing on time? Okay. Uh, so here are a few screenshots. I didn't really feel like I had enough time for a live demonstration, but uh, uh, it's yeah, fairly, fairly easy to see. Um, this is a screenshot of the implementation guide editor. You can see that uh, there's, you know, this is kind of the high level metadata about an implementation guide where you can specify what the canonical URL for the implementation guide is, the name. And in this case, the screenshot actually shows that there's a, a validation issue with the name uh, indicating that it's not properly formatted. There shouldn't be any spaces in it. Um, yeah, you also notice that there's a bunch of little question marks throughout the, throughout the editor. Uh, as you hover over those question marks, it kind of refers back to the core uh, fire specifications documentation on what those fields represent to kind of help you figure out what, what information needs to belong in those fields. Uh, the, the screen that you see here has, is, is kind of the common layout for the entire application. Uh, there's a, a number of tabs that you can click on starting, you know, it starts out with the quick tab which kind of is the, the bare minimum of what you need to see for an implementation guide. Uh, then it goes through in kind of more detail, uh, uh, general information which, you know, adds in a few more fields that may, may be less commonly used, uh, uh, narrative, narrative guidance that's uh, not as often specified, um, and uh, 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 such as uh, also pages uh, for the narrative guidance that you need to uh, that you need to specify, which actually is on the next screen. So here's a, a, a brief screenshot showing editing a page um, for an implementation guide. Here you can see that you can specify what the name uh, or the title of the page is going to be. Uh, you can, and it has a little markdown or uh, WYSIWYG editor to allow you to easily bold, italicize. Um, quote text, so on and so forth, uh, and, and it kind of uh, helps guide the, uh, the author to understanding that markdown syntax by uh, showing, you know, the, the, the two asterisks there on the bottom surrounding page uh, that kind of teaches you uh, over time how to do markdown on your own. Um, Here's a screenshot of the profile editor, uh, which is where a, a, a lot of the work happens when defining an implementation guide. Uh, again, it's a very similar layout uh, for a structure definition or a profile. Uh, it starts out with kind of the general information about the profile, uh, what the canonical URL is, what the type of the, uh, the, the profile is, whether or not it, in this case it's a diagnostic report, others might be a composition or, um, you know, who knows, whatever, uh, whatever you're profiling. Um, uh, again, some uh, validation 
you can see and highlighted in red saying that this name needs to you know, be formatted differently uh, with question marks all over kind of guiding the user to what information they need to uh, or what information the field is supposed to represent. Um, and here this is a screenshot of uh, several tabs over. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, the elements tab where it will uh, show you all of the possible elements within, within this profile and the ones that are bold are ones that have constraints uh, defined on them. Uh, all the ones that are left in, in normal font uh, don't have any constraints defined and the ones that have bold have some sort of customization such as uh, uh, changing the maximum cardinality. Um, and then uh, uh, once you've defined these constraints and you've built your profile, you add it to your implementation guide, you hit publish and the IG publisher does its thing and shows you what you need to change and uh, eventually you get to a satisfactory point where you can export it to GitHub as uh, kind of the source of truth or where it's going to be, where it's going to finally reside. Uh, lastly, uh, last slide here, uh, to access Trifolio on Fire, there's uh, kind of two places where you can do that. We have a production version of Trifolio on Fire uh, at this first link. Uh, I believe these slides are going to be handed out. Is that correct? Okay. Um, so you should have, you should get these links later. Uh, the first, first is the production URL. Um, it's not very commonly updated. Uh, the second one is a development environment, which is updated almost several times a day in some cases. You'll get kind of bleeding edge kind of information or, uh, or features and functionality in Trifolio on Fire and, uh, but also not guaranteed that it's always going to work 100% because it hasn't been QA'd for production yet. Um, with that, that's it for me. Simplifier is a, a fire registry uh, where everyone can upload its, uh, its resources, uh, its profiles and, its, and other conformance resources and Simplifier will render them nicely for you. And the whole idea of Simplifier is that you can see other ones works and um, so you can learn from it or even better if you, that you can reuse other ones profiles. Um, in addition to that, it also functions as a uh, collaboration platform. So we build in uh, quite some uh, amount of features that will help you uh, develop your profiles any further. And it also has an implementation guide to put all the narrative around those profiles. So we're going into the, the implementation guide editor. Well, it's based on, um, a, I think, a very intuitive uh, user interface. Um, the whole idea is that you should be able to uh, start your implementation guide within minutes. As you can see on the, the GIF on the slide, you uh, see how easy it is to create uh, an implementation guide. You just need to create a project and go to the guide step um, and press create an uh, implementation guide. Well, the fact that it's on Simplifier also has a great benefits. You can use all public available content on Simplifier. It doesn't matter which Fire version it is. Uh, and you can just easily include it into your implementation guide. And the good thing is it's free for everyone. You can just, everyone can have its own uh, first implementation guide. Um, but we have some uh, additional uh, advanced features that are really targeted for the, the more enterprise uh, use of implementation guides where you have uh, GitHub web integration or you can uh, adjust the CSS. Um, and we also have an export function which allows you to export your implementation guide into static HTML pages. Um, so let's go to the editor. This is uh, the editor as you will work in it to create your implementation guide. And it's actually divided in three sections. So at the left side, you order your implementation guide. You, you define the, the IG structure. Uh, the middle section is the editor itself. Uh, and on the right side, you will see the preview of everything you edit in the editor. Um, well, to show some uh, icons. So on the left side, again, the implementation guide structure, which is actually easily managed by adding a uh, parent pages or child pages. Um, next to it, you've got some settings where you can add, enter the, the metadata about your implementation guide and also uh, the CSS editor. Every page has its own uh, logging and history, and you can see the differentials per uh, version of the page. Next to the preview on the, on the right side, you have the button to go to the, the actual implementation guide as it is hosted online, by clicking the preview button. And we have some inline documentation which will open up uh, actually an implementation guide in an implementation guide um, where you can see all kinds of uh, helpful things that um, you may, might need in creating that implementation guide. 
Well, about that structure, um, it's easily done by just creating those pages, the, those uh, parent or child pages. Um, and we have a drag and drop system that uh, allows you to just move the implementation guide page uh, somewhere else in the, in the guide. Well, it's also based on Markdown, and I think that's a pretty nice uh, syntax for uh, editing your, implement your narratives. Especially if you have ever worked with MediaWiki or whatever, then uh, Markdown is definitely uh, very nice. And uh, the editor has some very nice features as well, like um, it can uh, highlight some code, uh, the syntax of, of C-sharp code or Java code, um, as shown uh, at the right, the picture in the, on the right side of the slide. Um, but I think the real key feature of the implementation guide is the, the uh, is the fact that you can include all those um, profiles and uh, other conformance resources in your implementation guide with a very easy statement. You just enter a statement like render and followed by uh, the project name uh, slash the, the resource URL key as it lives on Simplifier. Uh, and doing that will just um, render the, implement the resource in your implementation guide. Uh, next to the rendering of uh, the structure definitions and other conformance resources. We also have other uh, commands which will allow you to render the XML, the JSON, the table, uh, or the, the whole dictionary of a, of a structure definition. And uh, we have an IntelliSense uh, feature that helps you in selecting the right profile in the whole registry, uh, as you might have seen in the GIF, uh, which is being up now. So you see the functions you have and then uh, all the projects, and then the resources that are inside that project. Um, well, the output of the guide, the editor, uh, by default we have three different styles, which is a two-level menu, um, a uh, tree-structured way where you have the same structure which you saw in the implementation guide editor, uh, but then also in the, the web pages. Uh, and we have a HL7 balletable uh, style, which uh, is already more in line with what HL7 uh, requires when you want to ballot your implementation guide. Well, among the, the paid plans, um, you can also edit the CSS and the HTML, which is also done in the same editor, uh, as you can see on the screenshot on the right side. Well, while you're creating your implementation guide, um, the output, which will also be uh, put in your project are um, uh, markdown pages and an implementation and fire implementation guide resources, which uh, list the whole structure. And with it, you can actually export all uh, of your pages from one project to another or to another tooling. And of course, in the end, you will have a, a web page uh, where your implementation guide is hosted. Um, another feature is that you can export the the whole implementation guide is static HTML pages if you want to host your uh, guide somewhere else. Well, on the roadmap for the implementation guide editor, we have got some big features coming up, like milestoning, where you uh, can uh, give multiple versions of your implementation guide within the same project, uh, within the reference from the, the guide. Uh, we will add more rendering options and uh, Last but not least, we will have better integration with fire packages so you can actually point to the specific right version of the, the profiles in your implementation guide. Um, so I wanted to, before this tutorial, I created a small uh, example implementation guide which I wanted to show very quickly uh, and maybe also hit the profiling academy which is uh, made in an implementation guide as well. So to just show the implementation guide I created. This is the, the project on Simplifier. we we'll go to the guide step. I see here the, uh, the implementation guide. If I click on Browse, uh, it will open up the, the web page where uh, the implementation guide is hosted. Um, and for example, I just described uh, a fictive uh, use case. And you can see that Simplifier renders it here quite nicely. Um, so I've shown you how easy it is to include those uh, profiles. If we have a look over here, you can see the result on how it, how it looks like in your, in your implementation guides. And this is just 
included with a simple statement uh, through the backhand. So the editor itself, if you open it up, you will see the, the editor as I shown in the, the picture. If we go to the uh, lab observation profile, for example, you can see that here's the statement. And if we want to include another profile, we can just add, um, well, another page. And we say this is our, uh, for example, my NO core patient, which is hosted in a different project. It create, will create that page. And I will say render. I know this profile is listed in the uh, Nictus project, which I can select. And then I will search for my NO core patient. And I will close it. And then we've included the profile, the NO core profile. So this is how easy it is to uh, create your implementation guide. Um, very f the last thing I wanted to show you is the, the Profiling Academy, where we list all our best practices uh, regarding to uh, creating profiles. If you go to the Simplify homepage and you click on Profiling Academy, you will end up at uh, this implementation guide, because the whole Profiling Academy is also built with, an impl with our implementation guide editor. Uh, and it, this contains all uh, best practices for uh, making profiles. So, which works the same way. It include, includes uh, some profiles as well and has, it has exercises in it. So I think I'm, uh, I'm done with my demo. And we, we've been through three toolings very briefly. <clears throat> um, but we have another session this afternoon where uh, we can go into more depth. And uh, we've provided some uh, example content which you can use to create your own implementation guide. And I think we both, like Lloyd, Xian, and myself, will be uh, at that session uh, helping out if you want to try one of these tools uh, for yourself. So, yeah. Are there any questions? <laughs>